welcome back to my channel and welcome to the next rigging tutorial last time we went over mouth forms and the mouth opening so if you want to check out that video before this one feel free to there are some tips there that i am going to use in this video but that goes for all my other rigging videos so today we're gonna work on head angles we're gonna be doing angles x y and z and i will also be going over augmented physics now if you don't know what augmented physics are it's basically movement physics for your model that gives it a little more life there are different ways to add these physics in i do it an easier way that i think looks cleaner but it does take away some of the rigging i will explain that later just follow along and we'll figure it out together so first of all just like the mouth rigging video, we're gonna look up a guide. I feel like the head angles for a model can really set apart a good rig from a bad rig, maybe even more so than the mouth. A good model that has good angles can really show the depth of the model and make it look more 3D rather than 2D. If you're an experienced artist and you regularly draw head angles like three fourths, looking up, looking down, this will be a lot easier for you. If not, as I said, we're gonna look up a guide. So you can just go on Google and and just google up head angles but if you want to be more specific you can look up head angles live 2d i think a couple good guides will show up that you can use as reference i will say i think the hardest part about making head angles look really good are the corners and we'll be going over that hopefully it will make sense and then once you have your guide let's get into live 2d okay as i mentioned in my first video i do have my angles separated differently as you can see here in my inputs parameter folder i have have all the default angles that come with life to the angle x y and z and also body x y and z basically these are what you're inputting into your program when you move your head to the left and right that's angle x if you're moving your head up and down it inputs it into angle y so that's why i put these into inputs and then over here in angles is where i have my head angles so i named these angle x y and z physics but you can name these whatever you want whatever makes it easier for you so you can just press new parameter and make a new one this is my angle x physics parameter so my name is just angle x physics id doesn't really matter Matter. and my ranges go from negative 30 to 0 to maximum 30 and then once you're done with that do that for each of these angles so these parameters are going to be our physics parameters obviously so when we input angle x when we look to the left and right it's going to come out as these physics so we're going to start with the face so let's take away all of our hair over here in parts you're probably going to have a ton of warps that you see in parts if you go up to here you can actually hide it with the green button and the red button if you have any rotation warps so you can just see all the layers here just so we have our bald little face here hopefully your face is symmetrical and nice and shiny i know a lot of people like to have bald toggles so if you rig your head nice you won't look too weird when you take off all your hair so going over to my face i have all of my face art under one warp to make it easier for myself and we're gonna put in the mesh for our face so if you follow my guide, you should have a face line and face skin. We're going to add in mesh. Okay, so I have my face line and my face skin here. And usually I would manually mesh this, but I want to focus on something else. I'm just going to automatically mesh this. Please manually mesh this if you can. I'm going to start with the face skin. I'm going to deform it heavily. So it's going to look something like this. And then for the face line, if you do it with a heavy deformation, it's going to look like this, which is not what we want because actually we're going to use glue to connect the face line to the face skin. So we're going to take the face skin and go into manually mesh. And we're actually going to select all of the little vertices on the face. Control copy, check out. And then we're going to switch over to the face line, manually mesh that. We're going to select all of those vertices, hit delete, and then control V to paste it. And this will put the same exact mesh that we put on the face skin onto the face line. So now we can select both the face line and the face skin. And then if we go into the manual mesh editor, you see that these red lines are now green. Well, they're usually red. This is because the meshes are perfectly overlaying on top of each other. So now if we select all of the vertices here, this, this selects both the face line and the face skin vertices. And then you can hit control G and this will put a green box around all these red boxes. And this means that these vertices are glued together. So the face line and face skin are completely glued together. This is like a little intro to glue. I will explain glue better in another video. But I'm not the best at glue, honestly. So this basically just makes it so that 
the face line and the face skin, whenever one of them moves, the other will follow along with it. For example, if I take some of the vertices here with a brush tool, it will move both the face skin and the face line, although I'm only selecting the face line right now. So it just keeps it nice and neat when you're deforming them. Of course, as I said, if your face is just one layer, you don't have to do this. But there are a lot of benefits to separating your face line from the face skin. Okay, this is my third time recording this section, but hopefully the last time. So let's get to putting in warps and rigging the head. So first of all, I'm going to open up my face warp folder. And I'm gonna grab my face line, my face shadows, my blush, and my face skin. I'm gonna put that all under one angle X, Y warp. Now, it's gonna automatically put a box around everything, but you can actually edit this if you hold down control. And then you can warp the green points or the red points, holding down alt to do both sides at the same time. Usually I like to like, usually I like to square in on the face this way. Just to make sure it's all good and well. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure the warp is in the middle of the face. For example here, mine is not really in the middle. It's over to the left a little, so I'm gonna grab the right side and bring it out a little bit until it's right there. Next, we're gonna put in three keyforms on angle X. And we're gonna turn this all the way over to positive 30. The keyform that's the rightmost side is gonna be when your model looks to the right. And then the one, obviously, all the way to the left, your model's gonna look to the left. So going back to the right keyform, we're gonna start deforming the head. Take away the red box. Now holding down shift, I'm gonna grab these green corners and drag them over to the side I'm looking at. And you'll notice that we're forming that face that's looking to the side. Make sure you have your reference picture on hand so you can copy shape of the face to what you want or just freehand it like I'm gonna do. And then it's gonna look more and more like we're turning to the side. Now your face here is not gonna move since we're not warping it. So it's gonna look a little awkward when you're turning to the side and it's just staying there. You can hide it if you want. I usually don't because I like to use it as a guideline. But I think it'll be easier to see if I just get rid of all these for you guys. So let me just make those disappear. Okay, so now I got this little mushy head over here. And we're gonna want to deform it a little more. We want to edit it really well so it gives the illusion that the face is looking over to the side. So we're gonna add more of these green corners to edit by going into the Bezier division number and changing the height. Usually I like to change the height into five or six for the face. This adds more green corners vertically so we can edit these a little more. Now with the forehead jutting out, the head will go back a little Then your face sinks a little at your eyes. It goes back out in your nose and everything. Obviously Obviously, it's gonna look a little wonky. We need to add more of these gray dots here to edit it at a more detailed level. So we're gonna go to the number of conversion divisions. By default, it's five by five. Usually I like to go up by 10 for the face. Maybe less, maybe more depending on what I'm editing. But now we have more that we can edit, but it's a little awkward because all these gray dots are warping not as smoothly as they should be, especially for the face. That's supposed to be something smooth. We need to go to Bezier edit type. And by default, it's retain control structure, but we're gonna change it to smooth all. So now if we click on these green corners, it's gonna smooth out those gray dots into more curves and just make it a lot smoother. Now, of course, we only edited the middle of the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit the side over here because we really need that to pop out to show the dimensions of the face when turning. I'm gonna add one more to my height. And now it's looking a little more dimensional. Now, this is just a base sketch rig of the face, you could say. We just want to get a general movement of the face for everything on here. So I'm going to reflect the motion over. And now we're looking left and right. Next, we're gonna actually edit the face line and the face skin specifically so we can really get the right curves for the face. So if you select both your face line and your face skin, you can put a path deformer around the edge. I already have here because uh, this is my third time recording this, but if you wanna follow me, it's a little hard to see, but as always, you can start with less path deformers and add more when you need to add more details. So after you have that finished, we can actually, with both face line and face skin selected, put in angle X physics keyforms, turn over to the right. Now we can edit the face more. Usually I like to hover over path deformer, hide all my mesh, and actually edit that way so it's a little easier to see everything.
Now, if you have any weird lumpy parts like I do, especially over here, you can actually fix these pretty easily with path deformers. Just delete some at the area you want to fix, and then you're going to put path deformer dots at the peaks of your awkward spots. For example, mine are here and here. And then make sure you have little anchor points in between. So since I have one at this peak here, I need one here and one right in the middle here. And same for this one, I need one in the middle here and one over here. So after putting those path deformers in, you can just edit those dots and smooth those out. You might have to lower your path deformer distance depending on how crazy your peak is. And then once you have those smoothed out, you can actually just get rid of those path deformers and put them all on a nice straight line again. Or a curved line, I guess. And then you just keep detail editing each little bit of the face until you have something you're satisfied with. You can also just use the brush tool if there's larger areas you want to edit. And then once you have something you're satisfied with, just reflect it over horizontally. And bam, you have it looking left and right. Now, of course, you can make this turn more extreme depending on how far you want your model to look when you're looking over to your left and right. It's all up to personal preference. Now, if you have blush or any shadows on your face like me, they're probably going to look really whack because we're focusing on just the face skin for now. Honestly, you can just hide those for now. I do use my blush as a guideline for where I'm placing my eyes and my brows and everything. So I'm going to take everything under my blush. I have my blush mark separated from my blush, so I'm going to add a warp deformer. Little X Y on that, and since this is a child deformer under our parent deformer, the original angle X Y warp deformer, it's gonna have the same bezier settings. So if you want to edit those, you can. I would because I don't need this much editing for my blush. I'm gonna center it on my blush, and then add keyforms and edit my blush into where I want it to look. Okay, now with this finished, let's actually start working on angle Y. Some people like to do all their X angles first and then do their Ys and then do the corners. Personally, I just like to do X, Y and the corners of X, Y all together. So that's what we're doing in this tutorial. So going back to our original X, Y deformer on this entire face, we're going to add three keyforms to angle Y. And then positive angle Y is going to be when you're looking up and negative angle y is when you're looking down should be pretty easy to remember so going up to positive y we're gonna make our face look up and it's gonna be a little hard with all of these right down the middle with all of these green corners right down the middle because we have to move each bit individually up and up so i just like to lower it down to like three and then start editing the face looking up from there now, depending on what you're referencing, yours might look a little different from mine. If you're freehanding it like me, you should always think of the face as a ball. So when it looks up, it's going to be curved upwards. So it has that little bend here. Same thing for when it goes down, it's going to curve down. Now, I always feel like looking up and down is pretty tricky for some riggers that aren't too used to how to make the illusion of looking up and down. So it might be something you have to practice with, but as I said, using a reference really helps with how to make your model look like it's actually looking up and down. Okay, now that we have that done, I'm going to... Okay, now that we have that done, we're going to work on the corners for the rig quote-unquote sketch with the face. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Obviously, since it moves like in a circle pattern, you can link both and synthesize the corners. But this will make it a little awkward because if we look up, and to the side. Our head's gonna be jutting out like crazy over here. And if we look down, it's still gonna look kind of weird. Now this goes back into my little ball analogy. If the ball is turning in this direction, this part of the ball would disappear behind it. If that makes any sense. So this head would actually be going in like that instead of jutting out. So it makes the illusion that you're looking over to the side and up a little better. Obviously, I'm just freehanding it. If you have a reference, look at your reference and see how the head looks when it turns to the side at these angles. Same thing for this side. It would be 
squished in a little on that side. Now you can do it that way. You can also just take your angle X, copy this form, paste it on the corners, and then edit it from there. It's all the personal choice on how you think you could rig yours the best. But since this is a bit of a lazy, easy tutorial, synthesizing the corners and squeezing in the corners of the face is a little bit easier. And then once you do the corners for one side, you can just reflect it horizontally. So once you have all of those reflected over, you can test your face and see if it looks all right. Obviously, it's still gonna look a little rough. You can edit the sketch more if you'd like. I don't know why my head went back. I must have control z too much. I don't think my head goes down my neck enough to really have that rotational effect, so I'm gonna change that. And ma'am, it's looking a little better. If you just did the same way I did and hit all the mesh and just use the brush tool, you can go back in and shift the green corners a little bit to smooth everything out. Obviously, since I deformed it a lot with the brush tool, it's gonna have to smooth out a lot. So it will change a lot for me and you if you copied me when you click on the green corners. So if you don't like how it looks after smoothing it out, you can just go back and edit it. Or you can add more divisions here if you go change the width so that you can edit the sides here more. And then once we have the little sketch done, you can edit these corners when you go into your face line and face skin. Just add the keyforms to angle Y. You can edit the looking up and looking down. You add the corners. And then I'm going to reflect those over to the left. And double check. We have our face rotating on our XY axis. Hopefully yours looks nicer than mine. I'm probably going to go and edit it more a little later, but it's good enough for now. Now that we have the base of our face finished, let's get into rigging the rest of the face onto angle X and Y. So I'm going to start putting my eyes on and I'm going over to my eye warp I'm gonna put those under an angle XY warp and then same thing as I did for the face make sure the warp is centered on the face it looks pretty centered to me I think and then add angle X turn over to the right and just start rigging it in Now, if you're like me, you're probably going to notice that it's going to look a little weird. Mostly because of my blush placement. So I'm probably going to have to move my blush a little later on. Alright, that looks good enough to me. I'm just gonna quickly edit my blush to match. Okay, now I'm gonna go over and do my eyebrows. Something that really helps with giving the illusion of head turning is adding anything that makes it look more 3D. For example, where your eyebrows are, usually you have a little bump, so I put my Bezier Division width to 4 so I can have green corners on right in the middle of my eyebrows and just make it look like it's jutting out a little bit, if that makes any sense. A lot of doing the angle XY for the face is really trying to make all these little things add up into looking like the head is turning. So put in a lot of detail and care when editing your face. The 
this is good enough for me. Next, I'm gonna do my nose. So the nose is another object on the face that if you rig it pretty well when it turns left and right, it really adds more onto the illusion of looking left and right. I'm sorry I keep saying that, but it's all I can use right now. Depending on the kind of nose you make, you might have to do a lot of effort into rigging it. But since I'm just doing a basic anime girl with a little dot nose, it's a lot easier. I do have a little more layers for some more details. In the future, if you have like an Ikemen face with like an actual defined longer nose, I will try to do a tutorial about that in another, another little series. But for now, simple little anime nose. I'm gonna take everything on my nose, put it in its own angle XY warp deformer. And I'm gonna center the warp. And like I did it for the rest, put in keyforms for angle X. I'm gonna start rigging it. Now usually for anime characters, facing forward they have a little dot for their nose most of the time. But when they turn, they're gonna have a little line that usually looks like this. Or something that looks a little better than that. So usually, as I just showed, I would first manually put in my mesh for the nose. I'm probably gonna want to make it a lot nicer than this, but that's what we're going with. And we'll put two, and we'll put three path deformer dots right along the middle of it. So when you turn to the side, don't forget your keyforms. You can stretch out what little color there is on this layer to give more of a nose illusion. Again, little detailed edits you can do after the base warp can really add more life into your rig. I'm gonna go in and edit my angle X for my nose shine since it's a little wonky on the sketch rig. And there we go. We got the nose looking a little more dimensional. I'm gonna do my angle line now. Okay, I think I'm done with the nose. Okay, I just edited some more parts of the face that was looking weird when I was looking around, so it looks a little better now. But anyway, we're gonna go into the next part, which are the ears. Sometimes I like to do the front hair before I do the ears. Depends, depends. But I think right now, we'll do the ears first and we can edit it later. Now for the ears, I'm gonna explain more about how to use clipping masks. So for example, on some rigs, if you can even see their ears, they turn to the side, their ear might pop out right on top of their head. Some people use draw order to do this. And I know when I was first learning Live 2D, there are a lot of tutorials out there that really emphasize draw order. Obviously, if you've watched through all my tutorials, I haven't touched on that yet, but I almost never use it. So you're not on the right channel if you want to learn how to use draw order. But this is how I do that ear popping out technique technique for my models. So first of all, my ear art is under my face, as you can see here. I'm gonna put my ears over my face. Now obviously, this is gonna look really weird, especially if you have a lot of your ear poking out onto your face. So we can actually use clipping masks to hide the sides of the ears when we're facing forward. I'm gonna teach you guys how to use the invert mask option. So with my ears on top of my face, I'm actually gonna go into my face and take my face skin and actually copy paste that. Also make sure your face skin is actually under all your ears. That'll be a little easier to understand. And then when you copy paste your face skin, it's going to be in the same folder where your original face skin is. Keep it there because we want it to warp the same way as the face. And then let's rename this into ear clip or whatever else is easier for you to understand. So first let me just organize my ears into left and right since I have a lot of accessories on them. Okay, so taking the ear clip layer, which is our face skin just copied, we're gonna take the ID, copy that, select everything on your ears, paste it into your clipping ID, and then click invert mask. So this makes it so that the ears look like they're behind the skin. This is because everything of the ears or everything we just clipped will show except for whatever touches the face skin. 
And then if we take the ear clip layer and turn the opacity to zero, we won't be able to see all the face skin on top, but it will still clip onto the ears like this. So it will still hide the ear when we move it. So I'm going to hide. So I'm going to hide the ear clip layer just so I can see the ears on top first. I'm going to take both ears and add an angle XY deformer. And then I'm going to do the same process I did with the other things on the face and rig them on. For this other ear here, I'm going to tuck it behind the face. Obviously, it doesn't look like I'm tucking it because you can still see the ears and everything. And tuck it in there and double check. That looks good enough, I think. And I'm just going to reflect that horizontally. Now, I'm going to turn back on the ear clip. Now, our ears are behind everything. I'm going to turn it over to the right. And I just realized we already have keyforms on this because it copies the keyforms of the face skin. This is an issue because we only put the opacity zero on one keyform. So we would have to put opacity zero on all these keyforms or else it will pop up again. You can turn each little key point into zero if you'd like. I'm just going to set another warp. I'll just call this ear clip. I'm going to set this warp deformer to opacity zero. And that will make everything in that warp opacity zero. I don't see it at all. And I'm going to go back into my ear clip layer and get to editing. So when I look to the right, I want my ear to pop out. So I'm going to grab my brush tool and push the ear clip over so I can reveal my ear. It looks kind of weird on my blush, but I'll have my hair covering that anyway. So you can play around with that and see what works for you. And then since our ear clip is just a copy of the face, it's already perfect on this side and we'll hide this ear. As you can see here, and I'll just reflect that horizontally and then we'll be the same on this ear. And then having the ear on top gives it a little more dimension for the face turns. So I think it's a nice touch. Might move the ears back a little more though. So I'm going to hide my ear clip again and just rig my angle XY for my ears and all the corners and everything. Okay, and then once my ears are done, I'm going to put back the ear clip. And then I'm going to do each corner and everything for these. And voila, we've got ears moving back and in front of her head. Hello, it's a new day for me, so um, I have no idea what I just did. I think I just got finished rigging the ears, so next we're gonna fill up our bald little head. And usually I like to start with the front hair, so I'm just gonna turn on all the front hair. And it's gonna be mostly the same process as everything else we've rigged on the face, just, you know, getting it to look right at each angle. Except... Hair is also one of the big factors in really making a rig look like they're actually looking to the left and right and down and up because the hair, you know, it encapsulates your head. So when your head turns, your hair is going to turn pretty drastically too. I'll explain it as I go, but I have my front hair here and I've kind of separated my fringes into different sections. Okay, so usually for hair, I like to tackle each section, section by section. But I think an easier method is to group everything and then edit each one individually. You can obviously do this for each part that you're rigging. I probably already put notes in the video for this, but for example, if you wanted to put your eyes and your brows, your nose and your mouth all in one general angle XY rig, and then rig each of them individually to fit them into different spots or different angles, that would be good for keeping everything pretty consistent. And hair gets pretty tricky, so I do like to do that with hair. So I'm just going to select everything on my front hair and put it into an XY warp. Again, make sure everything's meshed correctly. For my hair, I usually like to do an automatic mesh um, for a heavy deformation. Usually, for my lazy self, that's good enough. But if it's a pretty particular piece of hair, I will manually mesh it. So it's up to your personal choice. Since the hair does get pretty warped up when we rig in the physics, you might want to make it pretty detailed but we'll handle that when we get to hair physics and everything so having our warp selected i'm just gonna do the same thing i did for the face and make it smaller with control and alt so we're gonna start with angle x turn this over to the side now 
depending on your hair now depending on your hair you might want to rig it differently it's all up to personal choice and of course how your hair works and how you want to work with it but as a general rule of thumb i like to actually just grab everything here and shift it over a little bit and then i will bump this out i'm gonna add more conversion divisions and bezier divisions just down the middle like i did for the face I'm gonna morph it. Like I said, the face is kind of like a ball, so I want my hair to puff out a little over here. And then I'm going to tuck the hair on the side in. A good rule of thumb is to also note where the center of your head is or where your hair is sprouting from. For example, mine is pretty much on the center. So when I turn my head, it's gonna keep onto the center here really helps with the illusion of turning left and right and i'm just going to reflect it horizontally now for me this is a pretty decent sketch rig so i'm just going to go into the hair and do a more detailed edit on the angle x as i said earlier hair really helps with the illusion so what i want to do is i have a lot of mid hair here for example this fringe here is like my front hair and these two over here are like my mid hair so when i turn i want these to kind of jut out a little bit like this so it really shows more depth into my turn and since it's symmetrical on both sides i'm just going to select each piece pair them together put their own warp on and then just rig in the angle x Now, it's looking pretty decent to me right now. I'll probably do more detailed edits since I have a lot of separation for my hair. For example, I have this here and then I have little flicks here. I'll probably do that later. Now that I have that done, I'm now just going to go back into all those angle XY warps I just did and do angle Y and then do the corners. Okay, honestly, that's good enough for me. Obviously, I will go back and do some more detailed editing after I record, but just some little tips or... I mean, you can take them if you like them, but whenever I look down, I do like to make the hair go over my face a little more. It kind of gives the illusion that your hair is hanging over your face, so it gives more of that looking down look but maybe i have it too much i'm probably gonna squish it up a little bit but okay i think i'm satisfied with this for now next i'm gonna move on to my mid hair obviously we so this is my mid hair which is my hair tied back so it's basically the shape of my head so i'm gonna mesh all of this this is some crazy looking mesh, but it'll work, I guess. I'm gonna select everything on my mid hair. Give it a warp. I'm gonna zone in on everything. And then I'm just gonna do my sketch rig. If your hair only has like two layers, like the front and the back, it's really too two-dimensional. You're going to want to add some sort of mid-layer that will usually be hidden when you're just facing forward like this, but it will reveal itself when you turn your head. Something to keep in mind for a better looking rig, in my opinion at least. Okay, ignore my wonky looking rig. I'll probably show my finished product at the end of the tutorial. <laughs> We're just trying to get in um, a general rig right now. Well, at least I am. Just do it better than me, okay? I'm gonna rig in my little flicks here really quick. Okay, this is decent enough. Now I'm gonna add the pigtails, which are just pretty easy, honestly. Another good thing to note when you're rigging hair or anything else for when you're looking up and down is how they move up and down respectively to your face. Imagine you have a ponytail on the back of your head. Just, just imagine. And then you look down, it's gonna look up. And then when you look up, it's gonna be pointing down. Something to keep in mind. 
I'm sorry, my rig is getting sloppier and sloppier as we go. I know this tutorial is going to be a bit longer too, so I'm trying to speed things up. I just want to teach you guys how to do it, and then you guys can perfect it on your own. There are some things here I do want to fix with the face. Like for example, in this corner, I kind of want to smush these in more, so I don't have too much of this showing here. Just some little things I gotta go back and refine, back and forth, back and forth. Anyway, I'm gonna refine this, and then I'll be back for angle Z. See you in a second. Okay, so I did a little bit of touch up. I fixed the hair a bit. It looks a little better. Obviously, as I go through, I'm gonna fix it more. I fixed up my jaw a bit. I fixed the side of my face a little bit. Um, I especially fixed up my eyes here. On the original angle XY rig for the eyes, they're pretty concave going this way. So they look pretty flat against the face. So I just put another warp deformer on top of the eye that just pushes it out more when it looks to the side here. As you can see here, just to give it more dimension, I uh, especially did it on the pupils here. So they look like they're rounded against a surface. So, just little things there. You can obviously do as much as you want, unless you're on the free version. So, touch up as much as needed. I am gonna go more into how to use inversion masks to up your rig. If you've been paying close attention to my layers, you'll notice I already have a neck clip layer here. Turn that on, it's invisible right now. It's just this little purple circle. It doesn't really matter what color since, you know, it's gonna be invisible. But I'm gonna use this to fade my face line when I look up. So it really gives more an illusion of me looking up. So that's why I like to separate my face line from my face skin. There's also other benefits to doing that, but this is one of my favorites. Of course, if you don't have a neck clip or anything to use, you can take your pupil and just copy paste it and warp it into a shape you want to use. Or just use your face again, just make it small in the beginning. After you take all the keyforms out, there's plenty of ways to reuse stuff. If you do copy and paste a part from your model, it does save some space on your texture atlas. So just a heads up. So to do this, I'm going to automatically mesh my little neck clip. And I'm just going to bring it up to my face face in parts and i'm gonna grab the id and then grab my face line and paste it into the clipping id and then hit invert mask then i'm gonna turn my neck clip back to zero so you can't see it and i can hide the face line so first of all it's kind of awkward right here because this is just our default looking position and we don't really want our neck to fade here i mean you can if you want but i'm gonna move it here and since we have no keyforms on it it's gonna be its default position as well as with Opacity 0, all the keyforms we make now will start at 0 and this position. I'm going to start with angle Y, since this is mostly just for looking up at 3 keyforms. I'm going to look up. Now, right now, it's actually fine. As you can see, it's giving more of that illusion. I am going to have to extend my face more and do more editing to really make it look not awkward. But all you gotta do is warp it a bit and get looking right. Once you have the angle Y up all rigged up, you can add in your angle X physics so you can edit how it looks when you turn to the side while looking up. Hide my hair. And voila! It just gives a little more of that illusion. You might want to fix the default position here if it looks awkward at certain angles. For example, when I turn here, the side, it's going to make my jaw disappear. But if you like it, you can keep it. And if you don't, you can move it. I'm going to move it just a little bit. I actually like the little hidden part when looking to the side. Although I might change it later, but yeah, just something to use and keep in mind to um, edit it to however you want it to look. I'm gonna just quickly fix my face for when I look up. Okay, that's a little better. When we look up, your chin's gonna be tilted up, so you won't really see it facing forward. So I tucked my chin in a bit. Now I have a goofy looking up little face, but yeah, you can play around with that. Obviously, you can use inverse clipping for a lot of other things. So it's something to keep in mind when you're drawing your model and trying to figure out how you're gonna rig certain things. All right, next, we're gonna finally do angle Z. So angle Z is just when your head tilts from side to side, so it's pretty easy, honestly. We're just gonna grab everything on our head and we're gonna use a rotation deformer which is the one next to the warp deformer here the one with the circle and the point if you've been following my tutorials only we have not used these yet and then this angle z so these deformers are as it's labeled they're rotation points 
So whatever's at the point, it will rotate from that point. So I'm gonna hit Control and Shift to shift this down to the neck. Now, depending on where you place it depends on, you know, where your head hinges from. So just find a place you like that looks okay when your head turns. I know some people like to put it directly on their chin. I like to put it like a little above. Really depends on how you like the look. Now we're just gonna add three keyforms, angle Z. And positive angle Z is gonna be over, leaning to the right. Uh, just pick a place you like. Honestly, I kind of like it when there's a lot. So I think I'm gonna go here. Is that too much? I guess we'll see. And then I'll just reflect the motion over. And there we go. And then you can also link angle X and Y. And then as you're tilting your head, you can see how it looks at that angle. They're obviously gonna look a little funky because we haven't done anything to the neck here. But now I kind of avoid using rotation deformers. So you won't see me using them too much. If you use the wrong combination of rotation and warp deformers, it will mess up your rig a bit. So I, just for now, if you don't really know how they work too much together, just try to avoid using too many rotation deformers. So now that we have the head done, we can do the neck. So go over to your neck. I have mine in its own little warp folder here with its shadow. I'm going to auto mesh them. And then I'm just going to grab both of them and put them into an angle Z deformer. Put three keyforms on that. And now we're going to go all the way to positive angle Z and morph the neck to suit the head. Now, I know some people don't like to rig the neck for angle Z for whatever reason. So if you like this look, you can just keep it like that. Um, you are going to have to edit these though. So what I like to do is with my pointer tool, just actually click and drag to select some dots here. And I'll just rotate it here and then try to find a good spot on the neck. And you can play around with this. Now it looks pretty decent. Obviously it looks like our neck is broken. So I'm going to add more as your divisions and smooth them out. I also like to expand the top a little like this. It's like sprouting out. It's really up to you because I like it's a little thicker over here near the head. Just makes it look like it gives more balance. And then don't forget to make sure your neck down here looks the same. You can actually go to right here at the default, select some of those gray dots, and then you can hit Control Shift C, and then go over here to Control Shift V, and that will paste the form here in a second. You can also do that. Obviously, it looks a little weird with the shoulders here. But honestly, I will edit the neck later when I get to the body, so honestly, this for now is fine. Gonna reflect the motion, check the angles. Now, for now, the angles all together look fine yours might be a little awkward and if it is you can actually just with angle x and y all these combined once you have your angle z completed you can hit the add three keyforms here and it'll add all keyforms here and then you can just like precisely edit each little dot so like for example if yours looked messed up here you can edit this a little and then switch over to the other side and edit that a little and then lean your head over and fix this a little and that's basically how I would do angle Z for the neck. Now, obviously, when you're using angle Z and your head's tilted to the side, you're gonna want your hair to also fall over on that side. I'll do one section just as an example, and then I'll speed through me doing it to the rest of the hair. But I'm gonna take my little pigtail here and put these in their own warp deformer. Add three keyframes, turn over to the side, and then I'm gonna use this tool here that grabs multiple dots as a brush. And I'm gonna rotate all these as if they're falling over to the side. Position that. And now, when we're leaning over to the side, it's gonna fall that way. I'm gonna make it tilt this way for this side a little bit. It's really up to you how much you want it tilt. I'm just gonna copy that pigtail and paste it on the other side. Now for angle Z, you are going to want to reflect these parameters, so keep that in mind. And now my pigtails are falling to either side when I'm tilting my head. I'm just going to quickly do that for everything else on my head.
Okay, so I think that's all the hair I want to do that to. I think it just makes it a lot cuter. Now, we've basically got all the face angles done. Yahoo! Well, now we can test it out in the physics menu. So, going over to modeling, you can open up your physics settings. Now, this is the fun part. I already have my presets in if you watched the first rigging video. But I'm going to show you how to make your own for the easy augmented angles. So, you're just going to hit add. And then you can name this the same name as whatever you named your new angle parameters as. All of mine are named Physic Angle XYZ. So you can just name it whatever you want and then just hit OK and then you should get a blank slate. I'll go through my Physic Angle X one first and then you guys can just do the same for, for Y and Z. So on our input settings, you're going to want to hit Add and then find your Angle X. You're gonna add that as an angle. So the difference between position and angle is I don't know if I can explain this well, but you should just follow along. And then once you add your angle X angle, you're gonna want to put the effect to 100. I'll explain how the effect changes how your physics look. And then for output settings, you're gonna want to add your angle X physics parameter that you made. That's not your angle X input. And then once you have that in, you're going to want to make your physics settings. So this is mine. Duration 10, shaking 0.8, reaction 1, overall acceleration 1. And then once you have your input, output, and your physics done, you should be able to just use your cursor and click and drag across your model. Or you can go over to the angle X slider and look left and right. Now you'll see the augmented physics here. Obviously, when you look to the right, there's a little bounce. It adds a lot more life to your model, trust me. And you'll notice that it will follow your angle X physics here, but not completely. So if you go all the way over to your max of X, your angle X physics is not actually going to reach the end of what you rig because it needs it to bounce here. So this is what the angle does. If we change it to position, you'll see here that it goes back to the default position after a bit. Also, it's kind of awkward right now since we changed it, but that's the difference between position and angle. You can play with that. And then effect is how much turning to the right for angle x is going to affect our angle x physics so if we turn this down to 50 it's going to be more in the middle here so not as effective that's why we want this all the way up to 100 so we get as most as we can out of this so we won't completely get the max we rigged here because we're doing my lazy augmented version of augmented physics. But yeah, so you just do that for angle X, Y, and Z. They're all going to be the same thing. I have the same physics settings for most of them. You can change the shaking or the duration for some of them if you want to play around with how each thing works. So once you have all those physics in, you should be able to just play around with your model and everything should be moving for your angle X, Y, and Z physics. And then if you want to test the clicking and dragging with angle Z, you just go to preview, settings of the cursor tracking, and then find your angle Z input, and then set that to whatever mouse button you want. And then once it happens, you can click and drag and test it out. I think I'm gonna change my angle Z to 100. And yeah, we got the head all rigged in. It looks okay, I think. I'm gonna hit some random poses. Obviously, after playing around with it in the physics settings, you might want to change some parts. Um, I definitely am. I know I've been saying it this entire time, but I am always going back to edit stuff because I'm always messing up. So don't be afraid to go back and edit your stuff, guys. But yeah, we successfully completed the head with augmented physics that are pretty easy. Trust me, you should keep them. They're, they make the models really nice. And less stiff. Unless you like stiff models, then that's, that, that's okay. But I don't like stiff models. I like bouncy models. So, I hope I was able to teach this okay. I'm sorry, I was like all over the place. And I think the way I do it is kind of complicated, but hopefully you learned something. I do try to incorporate new tools each time I do a tutorial. Like starting off really simple and then slowly building up the tools you guys know how to use. I hope that helps a lot. But you know, I just want to make it more easy to digest. As I've been saying, doing the face angles is kind of tough for models if you want to make it look a certain way. But the next video, I will finally start doing hair physics and then we'll get to the body. So I hope you guys are ready for that. 
I just want to say again, thank you guys for all the love and support recently, even though I've been gone for like a month, basically. Especially on Twitter, I see you guys on there tagging me and stuff. And I'm so happy you guys are actually learning stuff from my tutorials. Yeah, that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.